Okay, so since we've already done one through eight, and remember on number two, we had 214 with a remainder of 14. For four, we had 168. For six, it was 194 with a remainder of 40. And for eight, it was 26. Okay, so those are the ones we had to do. Now let's look at number 10. It reads, I'm kind of, oops, way too much there. All right, you can check your answers to a division problem by using multiplication. How can you check the answer when a division problem has a remainder? So this is after you multiply the quotient by the divisor, what are you going to do with the remainder? Very good. Add the remainder. Okay. Good. All right, there we go. Let's move over to number 12. It takes 48 ounces of vegetable broth to make a pot of Chef Zoe's uh, minestrone soup. How many pots of soup can be made with 432 ounces of broth? Ooh, okay. I don't know whether I'm in the mood for soup just yet. I kind of wish it was cold weather. That would be yummy. Soon, soon, maybe we won't regret it. All right, let's take a look at number 12. I need to find out my author's purpose is to find how many pots let me erase this part, how many pots of soup can be made with 432 ounces of broth. That's a lot of broth. Okay, it takes 48 ounces of vegetable broth to make one pot. So here's my clues, 48 ounces to make one pot. I have a total of 432 ounces of broth. Okay. Because I'm given a total, there's only two operations I can use, division or subtraction. Well, I'm not going to take anything away unless I do repeated subtraction. 432 minus 48, minus another 48, minus another 48, minus another 48, minus another 48, until I get to where there's no, it gets to zero or it's uh, smaller. But I'm going to... Do this first. Okay, so how many groups of 48? Can't go into four. And remember we said we have to have at least two digits, right? But this is still too small because it has to be 48 or bigger in my dividend. So I have two zeros. Now I'm gonna kind of, let's see, I can start off with a one and start and start there. I'm gonna start So if you want to, I just I feel like there's still some people that are, feel more comfortable with this. If you're catching on and you can, you don't always have to start off with one. You can start off with 
five and then build yourself up. You can start with the highest, which would be nine and build yourself and work yourself down. So that's where you're gonna feel more comfortable. This is my doubles. It's two times 48. Add another group of 48. 144, that would be three times 48. Add another group of 48. Four plus four plus one equals nine. That's four times 48. Add another group of 48. So I'm just doing that repeated addition. Eight, nine, 10. Nine, 10 plus four equals 14. One plus one is two. This makes it five groups of 48. I know that if I double that, that's already 480. So I know it's not 10 for sure. So made another group of 48. This is where I want you to start really using your mental math and practicing on that. Six times 48. I'm gonna add another group of 48 because I'm not there yet. Eight plus eight equals 16, 12, that's 13, 336, I'm getting a little closer. So this is seven groups of 48. Can I keep going? Absolutely, so I'm gonna add another group of 48. Eight plus six equals 14, that's seven, eight, and three. That makes it eight times 48. Can I add another group? Okay, let's see what happens. Eight plus four equals 12. That's 12, that's 13. And three plus one equals four. So that's nine groups of 48. Wow, so how many pots can they make? Very good, nine pots. And we've already figured we're gonna multiply then. Nine times 48 equals 432. Subtract it out and it's zero. So they can make exactly nine pots. I'm gonna hold that way, that way you can pause it so you can take a look at what we're doing. Nine pots of soup. All right, let's go to the next one, 14. Sam picks out a book that has 468 pages. Wow, that's, that's a pretty good sized book, right? He wants to finish the book in 36 days. If he reads the same number of pages, that's a clue, same number of pages each day. What am I gonna say? How many pages should he read? Okay, so I can easily divide this out. Or, <clears throat> excuse me, you can multiply because I know that I have to equal my author's purpose. Let's do this. To find how many pages he needs to read. each day. So I can divide this out. I also know when I divide, I know that 36 times something is going to equal 468. So another strategy you can use is multiply 36 by each of these numbers to see which one will equal 468. So you can do that whichever way makes it easier for you. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to a separate sheet because I'm not going to have enough room here. And I'm just going to go ahead and divide. This is number 14. So I have 36 goes into 468 following that same concept, right? I need to have at least two digits because my 
divisor has two digits. If I have one group of 36 equals 36. Two groups of 36 is the same as adding those together. So that is 72. So that's going to be way too big. So I already have one group. And I'm going to subtract that out. This becomes 10. Is 10 less than my um, divisor? Sorry about that. Uh, can you see it? Yes, it is. So now I can bring down. And I'm starting again. So I'm looking at my answer choices. Because I know that in the tens place it's a 1, which one can I get rid of? Very good. I can begin to eliminate. Start eliminating. Okay, so I'm here at 2. I know I can eliminate 1 because 1 times 36 is 36. That's not going to work. So I'm going to go to the 3. I'm going to add another group of 36. 6, 7, 8, and there we go. So it's going to be 13. So it'll be um, 3 times 36 is 108, and subtract that out. So he needs to read 13 pages every day. And this is the work that I did to show that. When you're doing your division, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to look with your answer choices and start eliminating and use those numbers. So my next one was going to be 3. So 36 times 3, here it would have been 7, and I would have tried that one. But you can see how process of elimination really works. All right, let's look at number 16. Springfield has an aquarium that holds 336 gallons of water. Wow. So there's, they have that aquarium. It takes 24 hours to fill that aquarium, full day and night. So how many gallons of water fill the aquarium each hour? All right, so let's look at our author's purpose. Author's purpose, to find how many gallons of water, I'm going to put H2O, fills the aquarium each hour. Okay, that's what we need to find. Here are my clues. So this is where I'm going to come over. I'm going to kind of do this this way so I can show you about using, this is the beauty about um, with the dis, um, division, excuse me if you have the multiple choice. These are your clues. Remember we talked about context clues? I have a total and I want you to make sure that you're writing that word total or if it's only part, you've got to be able to distinguish that. Total 336 gallons. I'm going to just put GAL. And it takes 24 hours to fill. All right, so now I know that I'm going to, because I'm given a total, I have a total amount. There's only two operations I can do, subtract or divide. And remember, division is repeated subtraction. So if you want to, this is really risky, but you can go 336 minus 24, whatever you get here, subtract out 24, whatever you get here, subtract out 24, and you keep going and then add up the number of times that you subtracted out, right? That's one way. To me, that's um, it still works, but you're leaving a lot of room for error. You'll have to really go back and check your work. So here, I'm going to just do that standard algorithm, and I'm going to flip it over. So I have 336 divided by 24. So 24 
goes into 336. Okay. Remember that I have 24, right? Two digits for my divisor. I need to have two digits, a minimum of two digits for in my dividend. So now it's 33. How many groups of 24 can go into 23? So I have one times 24 equals 24. If I double that, it's 48. So it's only going to be one. One times 24 equals 24. I'm going to subtract that out. 13 minus 4 equals 9. So, so far I have all ones, right? So that's where I'm at. 9 is less than 24, so I'm okay. I'm going to bring this down. And now it's 96. Then I'm going to start using, oh wait, I have 3. So I said that 2 times 24 equals 48. 3 times, actually I'm going to put, I'm going to add another group of 24. That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 4, 5, 6, 72. That's 3 times 24 at 72. So I know that the 13 is not going to work because that would have been here. So I'm going to cross that out. The next one is 14. I'm going to add another group of 24. And that's 6, 9. There you go. So 4 times 24 equals 96. So the quotient is 14. So it will take 14 gallons an hour to fill up that tap. So the answer is 14. So do you see how you're kind of guiding yourself through with those answer choices? Perfect. All right, last problem. Okay, a city has 7,204 recycle bins. That's quite a bit. I wonder how many San Antonio has. So the city gives half, so I have to think, half, that's divided by two, of the recycle bins to its citizens. The rest of the recycle bins are divided into 23 equal groups for city parks. How many recycle bins are left? All right, so we're looking at the author's purpose is to find how many bins are left. Okay, my clues, and I have a little bit of room. If you don't, write those down. I have a total of 7,204 bins, recycle bins. Half are given to citizens. And the rest are divided into 23 equal groups. Okay, so now let's think about this. If I'm given that total amount, I got to take that full total, right? And it says, well, half of those were given to the citizens. So how many do they have left now? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to put this on a separate sheet of paper, kind of move this over. And I'll do it this way. So this is 18. I have 7,204. I'm going to take half of that is given to the citizens. So 2 goes into 7,204. All right. Now, this is what you did using one digit divisors in fourth grade. 2 goes into 7. How many times? So 1 times 2 equals. 2, 2 times 2 equals 4, 
two, um, three groups of two equals six, and three groups of three equals nine. Oh, that's four. Sorry, sorry, that's not right. I messed that one up. Four groups of two equals eight. So the eight will be too big, so it's gonna be three groups. Three times two equals six. That leaves me with one. Is my difference less than my divisor? Yes, it is. So I'm going to bring down. So that makes it 12. And I'm going to start again. How many groups of two go into 12? So if you wanted to finish that up, if you so you don't get yourself confused, six groups of two goes into 12. So this is six. I have zero, is zero less than two? Yes, it is. I'm gonna bring down. Well, how many groups of two goes into zero? Zero. Okay, so now I'm gonna still bring down. You could, if you wanted to, if this makes you makes it easier, I can already feel kids like, wait, wait. You could always do this. Zero minus zero is always zero and then you can bring down the rest of that. So you can do that or just keep going to the side. Um, either way works, but do what's comfortable for your understanding. So two goes into four, how many times? Two times. Two times two equals four and left with zero. So half of this goes to 3,602, go to the citizens, while the other half, we have 3,602, go to the parks. But they were divided, remember, into 23 equal groups. So here I'm going to have 3,602 divided by 23. Okay, with me so far? Now let's go ahead and divide this out. 23 goes into 3,602. I'm gonna just, I know that I'm starting with a two digit, so I need to have at least two digits in my dividend. 23 cannot go into three, so I'm placing that there. One times 23 equals 23. 2 times 23 equals 46. So I'm going to be using, and remember it said how many were left over, right? So we're not looking for something, we're not looking for the quotient, we're looking for what? Yes, the remainder. So 23, so it's going to be one group. 1 times 23 equals 23. Subtract that out. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 13 less than 23. Check. We're good to go. So now I can bring down. Now I have 130. All right. Well, I'm looking at my different answer choices, right? Wow, so I'm looking at what my quotient could be. I do have a one in the hundreds place. So for my quotient, it could be 156 or 138. So let's see what we've got. I'm gonna add another group of 23. That's 69, so that's three times 23. Going to add another group of 23, 9, 10, 11, 12, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's four groups of 23. So we know that it can't be C, right? Because we're like, this is quotient. This is quotient. So that won't work because that'll be three. So I'm going to add another group of 23, 3, 4, 5, 9, 10, 11. And I think that's going to be the closest that we can get. Got 
is if I add in another group of 23, that's eight, that's 138, that would be six groups of 23 and that's too big. So it's like, huh, so I think that my quotient would be the, I'm looking over here, looks like my answer is gonna be the 156. Do you see how we're going with that? So I know that's 115, but that doesn't make it my answer. I'm just using it as a guidance to get to my quotient so that I can find out what my remainder is. So I had to regroup my three, becomes a two, take that 10 to the ones place, 10 minus five equals five, two minus one is equals 15. Now I have, is my difference 15 less than my divisor? Yes, it is. So now I can bring down and I'm left with 152. So it looks like at six groups at 138, because that's one of the answer choices that I had. So let's see, equals 138. I'm gonna subtract that out, can't take eight from two, so I'm gonna go ahead and regroup my five. That becomes a four. 12 minus eight equals four. Four minus three equals one, and then one minus one equals zero. So this was my quotient that I know that that can't be it because it asked me how many bins do I have left? So what is my remainder? Very good. So how many bins do I have left? Excellent. I have 14 bins left over, and that answer is A. Great job, everybody. I know this was a little lengthy. I just, really, division is going to be so important because it takes us right into those fractions. So I really want to make sure that you're understanding. You guys have a great night. I will see you tomorrow. See me tomorrow morning before 7.30 if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in class. Bye.